in the tabernacle. Rest in this place. Hallelujah. Let thy glory go. Woo, God. Hallelujah. And then they both sign this.
place that will make signs and wonders easy. That place, Father. That place that makes miracles easy. That place, God. That place where the enemy can't go. That place, God. That place where sickness can't go. That place, God. That place where storms can't go. That place, God. That place, God. That place, God. That place, God. Hallelujah. Uh, 
until tonight, God, we put a demand on the atmosphere that heaven will open, that we will see the tangible presence of God. Let us see heaven. Let us see heaven tonight. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Hey, let your will be done. encourage you before we go any further the powerful thing about the presence of the Lord is this that wherever empty seats are it makes room for angels to fill them and so tonight uh, we are not concerned uh, about who is sitting beside you uh, who's not here yet uh, but we come with one priority uh, and that is the presence of the Lord uh, for the Bible declares I'm outside, that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy uh, and at his right the right hand of God means favor and so I don't know what you need tonight uh, but the favor of God rests on this place What are you waiting on? I just want his right hand. Hey, glory of my soul. Let turn the love of Hoshana. We give you glory tonight, oh. Have you waited, Lord? Have you waited, Lord? Have you waited, Lord? And with your spirit, Speaks to me with my whole heart. I agree, and my answer will be yeah. Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the top. Of my soul, oh yes, Lord, completely yes. My soul says yes.
it feels a little bit better in here. I touch your mind and shout hallelujah one good time. Come on, from the city of your soul, cry hallelujah. Come on, from the depths of your heart, cry hallelujah. Hallelujah to your will. Hallelujah, I trust you. Hallelujah, I'll give you praise. Hallelujah through the storm. Hallelujah through the rain. Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I used to hear my grandma used to say, my soul looks back in wonder. When I consider the things that he's kept me from, when I consider how he made a way out of no way, when I considered how he kept my mind from dangers seen and unseen, I got a right to praise him. Praise him, I feel y'all. We got a right to praise him. The somebody said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, somebody look at your neighbor and say, well, where would I be? Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah, God. Let time that I'm ahead. God, I praise you. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and every way that is made, every door that is open, my hands go up. I look to the hill from which cometh all of my help. All of my help. Comes from, from the Lord above. Come on, let's move on. I'll, 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 I'll shoot you under the Bahia. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just about to shout hallelujah one time. Hey, God, I give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send your wind in the room, God. Send the second wind. We're ready. Do what you want to do. Throw your weight around. You can settle here. Settle on our minds. Settle on our hearts. Settle here. Settle here. Settle here. Let the angel. Hey, glory to God. You can settle here. It's a commander of the head. And we'll give you glory. And we'll give you glory. And I'll give you glory. Our God is greater. Our God is true. We're going to sing our song, but let me help you something. Don't ever get to a place where you come so comfortable and common with the presence of the Lord that you forget that any time in the service, he can show up with your miracle. If we come to have church tonight, the songwriter said, forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. I dare about three radical people to lift up your hands in the sanctuary and give God the fruit of your lips. Hey, I got to mind that over here. Saying the Lord can rebuke you now. We will worship. We will pray. We will come with expectation and anticipation. And his will will be done.
Now, why is he laughing? Because I'm laughing because many of us could have been trapped by the enemy a long time ago. And the truth of the matter is we are here today. Huh? And the joke's not on you, but it's on him. Huh? Because hell lost again. Huh? And that's the joke tonight. Devil, you are a defeated foe. Huh? And the fact that I'm still here today, I can give him praise. Yeah. Strong. 
Come on, Zion, from the city of your soul. Uh, the scripture says, trust in him with all in thy heart. Lean on into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. We acknowledge you tonight. Come on. You are the keeper of our souls. Uh, you're the one that makes us whole. Uh, we acknowledge you tonight, oh, Jesus. Nobody like you in the earth. Come on, come on, acknowledge him. Come on. Make your worship honorable. Come on. Acknowledge you tonight. Oh. You are the one that we need ever. We acknowledge you, Jesus. Hey. We acknowledge you, Jesus. Hey. We acknowledge you, healer. We acknowledge you, Savior. Can we lift our hands all over the sanctuary and let's just take a moment to just worship our Savior? Come on, it is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. It is in him that we have our being. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Come on, Zion, I wish I had some worshipers in the room that could just get beside yourself and worship the Savior. Jesus, come on, let it flow from the city of your soul. Hallelujah, Jesus. I believe there's somebody in the room tonight that can say, worship is not a put on for me. It's not something that I just do on Sunday, but every day I worship him. I worship him in spirit and in truth because he's my savior. I worship him because he's my protector. I worship him. So all over the room, lift your voices. And from the city of your soul, give God your best worship. Come on, pour out your love on the Savior tonight. Let him know how he makes you feel. Let him know how good he's been to you. Let him know how kind he's been to you. Let him know you appreciate his grace. Come on. Let him know you appreciate his mercy. God, we worship you tonight. Hey, yeah. get We worship you tonight, Jesus. Worship you 
worship your name. The name of Jesus still has power. I said the name of Jesus still has power. The name of Jesus still works. It still saves. It still heals. It still delivers. And what I love about him is that we can find ourselves hearing different names of people and places and we automatically know how to and what to associate them with. Like if I were to say the name Martin Luther King Jr., we would think civil rights. If I were to say Food Lion, we would think groceries. If I were to say Samsung or Apple, we, we would think a cellular device. But when I think about the name of Jesus, I find myself not being able to restrict him to one particular thing. Because not only has he been my savior, but he's been my friend too. Not only has he been my friend, but he's been my redeemer. Not only has he been my redeemer, but he's been my healer. Not only has he been my healer, he's been my deliverer. I get lost for words because I don't know what to call him in this moment. Do I worship you because you've been good or do I worship you because you saved me? Is my hands lifted because you healed me? Do I holler because you delivered me? I tell you to high five somebody and say he's been all that and more. If I had 10,000 tongues, I could never. Now I understand what the songwriter meant when he said, I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. How you turned my... I wish I had about seven believers that can wave your hand at me and say, Lady Ashley, the Lord's been good to me. In fact, he's been better than good to me. He's been good to me when I couldn't be good to myself. And I think I treat myself pretty good most of the time, but he's been struggle for me. That's why I ain't got to be pumped and primed. I just need a moment to remember. That's why I ain't moved when nobody's staring at me. I ain't worried about what my neighbor got to say about my praise. All you need to know is that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my hands go up, my feet get light, my open I might run I might holler and if you love Jesus I wish you would lift your hands throw your head back and shout Jesus Jesus She would say, you can't call him like that and he not show up. You can't say his name like that and he not show up. If you really need the Lord tonight, one more time, lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus.
feel something about to break in this room. Somebody holler Jesus one more time. The breaker is here. The chain breaker is here. I'm sorry. No, I ain't. I just love Jesus. I can't apologize. I won't apologize. And before I take it back, I'll add some more to it. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Woo. I love Jesus. And sometimes I understand what Jeremiah felt when he tried to let that thing go. And Jeremiah said, I tried to sit down, but it was like fire. Shut up in my bones. Woo. Jeremiah was talking about preaching, but I'm talking about the praise that's on the inside of me. When I try to contain myself, when I try to act dignified and cute, every now and again, I forget about these good clothes. I forget about what I got on. I forget about what I came in here with. And I got to give a praise. We got to move but for the next 20 seconds. I want you to give God praise in your very own way. Not for what he's done for you, but I'm looking for some people to praise him just for who he is. I'm looking for somebody with the testimony that can say if the Lord don't do anything else, he's already done. Jesus, put your hands together right through here. And while you're clapping, just give God a great big hallelujah. I'm trying to move, but I feel something shaking. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. I am so glad to see each and every one of you here tonight. But I am so glad that the Lord is here. Y'all look real good. You look real sanctified and holy. But I can say with assurance tonight, if it was just me and God, I would have been all right. Woo. The Lord is here and we thank him for his presence. Yes, Lord, that is in the room tonight. One more time, if you love Jesus, put your hands together right through here.
We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to Impact 2022. And as I told you on last night, as you come in the sanctuary, all you have to do is brace for impact. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit has been impacting our lives since the beginning of this conference. Has anybody been blessed? Hallelujah. God is so good and he is so mindful of us. And so I want to formally welcome all of our guests, all of our visitors. If this is your first time worshiping at the deep, I want to welcome you to our church. This is not the perfect church, but it's the perfect place to grow. And so thank you for counting and not robbery to worship with us on this evening. Can you guys do me a favor and help me honor God for our pastor, our bishop who poured out his spirit on last night with the word we honor you we honor you while you are clapping can you help me honor god for our ministry gift on this evening all the way from mississippi we bless god for pastor jennifer thank you so much amen to all of you who operate in the fivefold ministry i say peace be unto each and every one of you from god our father it is good for us to be here amen amen while you are standing we're going to get ready to receive our offering Amen. We're going to get ready to put a seed in the ground. We thank God. Yeah, thank you. We thank God for increase, abundance, and overflow. And you got to keep saying that thing until you see it. Increase, abundance, and overflow. I thank God for the ability to give. Yeah, I thank God for the ability to give. I thank him for income and for multiple streams of income. I thank God and I am excited about being a tither. I know some people think it's outdated, but listen to me. My house is blessed because we are tithers. Consistent tithers. Amen. And we are consistent seed sowers. And we have seen what seed sowing can do. We have literally seen the hand of God over our lives because of our seeds. So I want you to join me this evening as we sow a $20 seed, not only into the kingdom of God, but into this conference. Amen. Because we understand that a conference of this magnitude comes with a price tag and we want to make sure that the house of God is taken care of. We want to make sure that we're not coming here night after night getting all this good grocery, getting all this good food and we don't leave a good tip. Amen. Amen. So if you are able to join me with that $20 seat, just stand all over the room. If you are saying, Lady Ashley, I don't have $20, but I'm going to get as close as I can to it. I see you. God sees you and he knows your heart. So stand with us all over the sanctuary. Our ways to give are on the screen. We have Cash App, our website via mail and in person. Amen. Can we put our giving declaration on the screen as we begin to recite that together? Let's go. It says, I am a tither. I am a seed sower. I believe the word of God concerning my finances. I am wealthy because the word says I can. I live in abundance because the word says I can. I trust God with my money. I sow this seed in faith and stand in expectation of a harvest. Seed go, seed grow, bring back my harvest. Amen. As you are given that seed tonight, put a name on your seed and believe God from the, from the bottom of your heart for that last part of our declaration that as the seed goes, it's going to grow, but it's going to bring you back a harvest. Amen. Amen. The musicians are going to give us some given music. These two sides here, you can stand and be escorted out from an usher. These two aisles here, you can also stand, be escorted out from our usher. In the middle aisle, you can stand as well and be escorted out from, our, from an usher. Put a smile on your face. The Lord loves a cheerful giver.
in the house. Are we excited? Amen. I forgot to honor our founders. Can we stand all over the room, even though they're watching virtually, and just bless God for our founders? Apostle Norbert and Lady Simmons. Amen. And we also want to honor God for our first lady, our international first lady, Lady Michelle McNair. Thank you so much for coming back to worship with us. Amen. Again, it is word time in the house of the Lord. We are so excited to have our ministry gift with us. She came to us a few years ago and completely blessed our lives. And from then on, I've been telling everybody that she's my auntie in my head. She's my auntie. She just gives me auntie vibes. Amen. So we thank God and we are so glad that the Lord allowed her to be with us on this evening. You are in for a treat, Deeper Life. You are in for a treat. Our media team is going to introduce our ministry gift further. Then we're going to receive from our praise team. And the next voice you will hear with preaching authority will be Pastor Jennifer Beard. Amen. Impact 2022 has Impact the city of Goldsboro. Tonight Goldsboro. We welcome, tonight we welcome our guest speaker, Pastor Jennifer Beard. Jennifer R. Beard is the senior pastor of Jackson Revival Center Church, a rapidly growing, non-denominational, ethnically diverse congregation in Jackson, Mississippi. She was ordained as a minister of the gospel in 1996, licensed in 1998, and has devoted the majority of her life to providing people with tools and resources that encourage and inspire them towards wholesome, transformational living. Prior to her role as senior pastor, Jennifer served as assistant pastor to her father, Raymond O. Beard, the founding pastor of Jackson Revival Center. It was then that she honored her abilities as a manager and administrator, skillfully navigating multiple projects and learning the behind the scenes operation of the church. Outside of the pulpit, Jennifer has spent her time developing multiple organizations that further accomplish the mission of transforming lives, including Little Ambassadors Developmental Learning Center, a preschool for inner city children, Hearts of Compassion Independent Living for Seniors, inspired by the vision of her mother, Dorothy Beard, and the Corporation for Global Community Development, a nonprofit organization designed to promote the growth and development of low to moderate income individuals and communities throughout the state of Mississippi. Pastor Beard has served on a variety of boards and councils, including the Bancorp South Community Reinvestment Advisory Council and as chairman of the Mayor's Faith-Based Advisory Council with the aim of finding common ground to achieve uncommon goals. Beyond the recognition and achievements, Jennifer is simply a woman driven to love God and love people. As the senior pastor of Jackson Revival Center, Jennifer connects with people from all walks of life. Each week is a new opportunity for her to affect change in men, women, and children, as she not only delivers the word of God from the pulpit, but also relates to the congregation personally. Caring for the body and witnessing God's transformative work is one of her greatest joys. Before she
Love him. Come on and put your hands together and give the Lord a good hand clap of praise all over the house tonight. If you love Jesus, I want you to open up your mouth, throw your head back, give God a good praise all over the house tonight. If you know God has been better to you than you've been to your own self, if you know you could have been dead and sleeping in your grave, hallelujah, come on and give him a good praise all over the house tonight. just to open up and say there's nobody like you Jesus nobody like you Jesus hallelujah we are so excited to be here tonight and I don't know about you but I am excited about the Word of God I've been in ministry over 25 years and I still get excited about the Word of God how it stirs how it lifts how it breaks what needs to be broken how it heals what needs to be healed and I'm excited about the Word of God tonight I'm excited about being here with you would you put your hands together and let us give God praise for Bishop designate Dr. Aaron McNair the second and for Lady Mac we thank God for the two of you I'll take you as a niece any day any day we give God glory I saw Lady Michelle McNair and I thank God for the connection and let me just say I am so godly proud of Dr. Aaron McNair and Lady Ashley uh, to see what all God is doing in your lives. I'm one of those people who have been watching from afar, celebrating every step of the way. And I'm telling you, you haven't even scratched the surface yet of all that God has for you. I want you to just tag two or three people very quickly and tell them I'm taking my territory. Yeah, tell them I'm taking my territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you, if you will, to grab your Bible. Let's go to the 14th chapter of the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're excited about what God is going to do on tonight. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from Jackson Revival Center in Jackson, Mississippi. And I am desperately trying to get back. <laughs> we will be leaving tonight, getting back on the road so that we can catch a six o'clock flight in the morning and prayerfully uh, beat this hurricane. Uh, those of you who have um, heard about the water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi, we're still dealing with that, unfortunately. And so we've got trucks coming in that are bringing water to the citizens of Jackson uh, on tomorrow. And then we've got uh, a funeral on Saturday. And so we just ask that you continue to keep us lifted. We pray traveling grace and mercy as we go back. I'm so glad to have with me uh, one of our ministry assistants, our chief of staff, uh, Sister Evelyn Edwards on tonight. So grateful to have her and also grateful to have uh, my son, Minister Marcus Singleton, here on the organ tonight. Uh, we don't always all get to travel together, but when we do, it's a good time. Uh, Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14, we honor your founders, Apostle Norbert and First Lady Simmons. 
And I'm telling you, I just think it is so amazing to see the transitions that are taking place, uh, how honorably they are being done. Grateful for sons and daughters who are positioned uh, and able to receive uh, when the fathers and the mothers uh, know that it's time to pass the torch. And so I'm so grateful for the spirit of honor that rests on this house, that rests on this congregation and your leaders. And so we just give God glory for all of the great things that God is doing, the things that he has done. Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14. Uh, I'll be reading from the King James Version. Uh, yours may read just a little bit differently, but we'll all end up in the same place. Amen. Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14 says, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so, be the Lord with, will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. I want to talk to you tonight about you will see it. I bring a prophetic declaration to you tonight. And some of you, there have been prophecies that have seemingly been hanging in the balance. And I just need you to look over at two or three people and just say, what the Lord has spoken, you will see it. Oh yeah, it may not look like anything is happening. It may not look like anything is moving. But what the Lord has spoken, you will see it. Yes, you will. You will see it. I want to let you know we're getting ready to live in and bask in and walk in things that we've only dreamed about. I want you to understand God is getting ready to revolutionize your life and what he's up to is big. Ah, yeah, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. One of the things you've got to understand, y'all can be seated. God has created us to do so much more than many of us will ever achieve in life. That not only did God create us with a capacity for greatness, but he provides opportunities along the way for us to achieve and fulfill his purpose and his assignment upon our lives. That God did not create you or I to just simply exist. He did not create you and spend all the time fashioning you like he fashioned you, giving you the personality that he has given you and putting all all of the, de the attention into detail that he has put into making you for you to just sit back and let life happen to you. God did not do all that he's done.
God and make the ways that he's made for you to sit back as an innocent bystander. If you look at the lives of people who have achieved greatness and lived out their purpose, what distinguishes them from others is not always that they had such a great gift. It is not always that they went to the best schools. It is not always that they had all of the financial backing in the world. It is not that they came from the best families, but what separates those, uh, the impactors, those who uh, make a mark, those who make the record, those who do things different is that they have a different mindset. They've got something different moving in their heart, something different that is conditioning their mind. And the Bible is replete with ordinary people who have overcome extraordinary obstacles to do great things for God because they have a different spirit. The Bible said of Daniel, he had a different spirit. He had an excellent spirit. The Bible said of Caleb, he had another spirit. And so I want to talk to you tonight uh, because there's something about people uh, like Bishop Designate McNair and Lady Ashley, uh, there's something different about them. I want to talk about their willingness to trust God, their willingness to believe God when other people have doubted their ability to walk into what God has said you can walk into. I want to talk about their willingness to stand strong and stand firm in the face of adversity. And I want you to understand as you look at the life of Caleb, as you look at the lives of Lady Ashley and Bishop Designate McNair, I want you to see that there are so many things that we leave on the table that are ours for the taking. So many things that we leave unexplored. So much available that we have not yet experienced that there is so much that God wants to do. The problem is it takes people who are fully committed, people who are fully persuaded that to walk into the kind of stuff that I sense God wants to take this house into, there's got to be a certain kind of resilience. There's got to be a certain kind of tenacity. There's got to be a certain kind of endurance in order for you to receive on the God level. I just wonder if there's about five people in here tonight who say, I want to receive on the God level. I don't want to settle for anything less than what God has for me. What this world needs right now is more people who are willing to stand flat footed and look the devil in the eye and say I came to take back everything that God said belongs to me. We don't need more fearful, timid clothes of the culture but what we need are people who will boldly pursue what we need is faith-filled believers who can look at a situation and no matter what say I believe because God said it we can do this I believe that because God said it even though you might not see anything moving right now God is going to do what he said he would do need everybody in this place to consider tonight what God has stored up waiting on you right now because it's going to take a Caleb anointing to get it. Uh, I want to show you tonight what it looks like to carry a Caleb anointing, what it looks like to walk in that kind of boldness, to walk in the power and the presence of God to the point that nothing good shall be withheld from you. I want you to be able when you see somebody to look at those people who have the eye to see what is not seen by everybody else's eyes. I want to talk about those who have an ear to hear what has not yet even been spoken. I want to talk about those who are in a place that they've got a boldness and a courage that they're willing to leave what was in order to walk into what God has said shall be. 
Now, it is important for you to understand that for the believer, times and seasons are not indicated or initiated uh, by clocks and calendars. That I need you to understand that when God is doing something in the life of the believer, that it is not initiated by chronology. But what God wants to do is initiated by word and by revelation of the Spirit of God in the kingdom of God. God, times and seasons shift by revelation. I need you to look over at somebody and say, I sense a shift in the atmosphere. That when you are coming into a new season, God by his word will alert you that something is getting ready to shift. And God is alerting us tonight that there's getting ready to be an increase in the supernatural workings of God in your life. That there are some things you need to begin to expect. That there are some indicators you need to be looking for. We are in our text in Joshua chapter 14 and we are in a moment where Caleb is getting ready to inherit what God has promised him some years before that in Joshua chapter 14 verse 7 we've got Caleb who is speaking and he said I was 40 years old when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land I was 40 when he sent me to spy it out and I brought him the word, watch this, that was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Now, you got to understand, y'all remember Joshua and Caleb and 10 other spies. There were 12 spies, including Joshua and Caleb. Moses spent, sent them to spy out the promised land of Canaan. 10 of them came back and said no. 10 of them said, nope, we got to back up. There's giants in the land. Ten said we got to slow our roll. Ten said we're not ready yet and it caused the heart of the people to become fearful and to begin to melt because of the word that they heard. Because of the negative report, the people did not want to go forward and face the adversary even though God has already promised them the land. You got to be careful who you listen to when you're in the midst of a faith fight. That the information of people that is contrary to the word of the Lord will wreck your stuff. That when you are in pursuit of the thing that God has spoken concerning your life, everybody can't have access to it. Everybody can't speak to it. That when you are in pursuit of something that God has promised, you got to put a guard over your spiritual ears. you got to put a guard at the gates of your heart because they may not be hearing what you're hearing. They may not have access to see what God is showing you. God may not allow allow them to sense what you're able to sense so you got to be careful who you allow to speak to you when your faith when your faith is in the midst of a fight there were 12 there were 10 who spoke naturally but there were two who spoke spiritually when Moses passed on, Joshua became the leader of the children of Israel. So now he is the one in charge. So Caleb comes to Joshua and they were aligned in the report that they gave to the people. We've got Joshua and Caleb speaking one thing. We've got 10 who are speaking something else. We've got 10 who reported what they saw with their eyes. But we've got two who came back and reported what they saw in their heart. I just wonder if I got some folk in here who say, baby, I'm all hard. I'm all hard. It don't matter 
uh, what I see with my eyes when I know what God has said in my heart that Joshua and Caleb had the promise of God in their heart and that is what they reported David said thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee thy word is a lamp unto my feet my, thy word is a light unto my path so if the word is in you the word has got to be your spiritual compass and because the word of God was in Caleb's heart the word was Caleb's compass Caleb was in another place in his faith and because of that anointing because of that different spirit because he had another spirit Caleb was able to see what they saw but see beyond what they said because of what was in his heart, Caleb said, we got this. Because of what was in his heart, Caleb said, we can do this. Caleb said, yeah, y'all are reporting what you saw, but I'm going to report what God said. Because what God said may not always line up with what you see. So ten were reporting what they saw in the natural, but two were reporting what they saw in the realm of the spirit. And because of that, they were able to walk in and to conquer what seemed to be impossible to conquer. I want to talk to you tonight because there are some people in this room. It may not be everybody, but I sense that there's at least 50 of y'all who have the spirit of Caleb resting on you. And no matter what comes again, Against you no matter what comes against this house no matter what comes up against your leaders you got another spirit in you that says we will not back up we will not give up that I came expecting to receive what God has for me and I refuse to go home empty-handed ain't no way I got dressed up in the midst of an oncoming hurricane to come to church and wave my hand and go back home the same way that I can all Hey, because I sense in my spirit that God is doing something. I sense in my spirit that God is up to something. There's a shift that's getting ready to take place. I sense a shaking in the atmosphere. Because there is a principle of prophetic inheritance that said what has been spoken must be uh, grabbed hold of, laid hold of tangibly. Yeah, yeah. That it's not enough just to talk about it. We got to be about it. And so it, there's, there's an anointing that when you are willing to receive what God has said and you don't back up every time something comes to check your faith. There is an anointing that is released upon you that increases your capacity. You're saying your capacity for what, pastor? I'm talking about your capacity to perceive a thing, your capacity to respond to something, your capacity to receive from the Spirit of God. That there is an anointing being released to increase capacity. You have to understand the supernatural will not occur with greater intensity until God's people are increased with greater capacity. So what happens in the earth is never just a product of what God can do. It is also a product of what we've got the boldness to believe him for. When you hear this, this Caleb anointing, you can see God where other people miss God. When, when, when you have this Caleb anointing, you become conscious of God's presence everywhere. That, that there are some lessons that we can learn from this one called Caleb that you've got to look closely and you've got to understand that there was a promise that was made concerning Caleb's life. We see in Numbers chapter 14 verse 24, it said, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, 
He followed me fully. And him I will bring into the land whereunto he went. Where did he go? Into the promised land. And it said not only is he going to go, but it said his seed is going with him. Deuteronomy 136, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he has trodden upon and to his children because he has wholly followed the Lord. That if you are going to possess what you don't see other people possess, if you want to go beyond what is regular, if you want to go beyond what is ordinary, and I don't sense that I got regular folk up in here tonight. Uh, Y'all are not normal. You are not average. You are not ordinary. That there's something that God is doing in this place that is so supernatural but if you want the promise you got to learn what it means to wholly follow the Lord because we got this thing that we want to follow God as long as it is comfortable and as long as it is convenient and the preachers already get it but what y'all got to get is that you ain't never going to be comfortable again because the Lord said the place that I'm taking you to will be a place of continual adjustment because it's going to be a place of continual progression. We got to learn what it means to to fully commit because we live in a day and a time where people have fear of commitment. Uh, that, that we want to serve God until the concert comes up. Uh, uh, we want to serve God until something better comes up over here. So something better, you know. I feel like I'm I'm always faithful. I'm always there, but I just believe this time I'm gonna just sit back at home. No, no, no. You got to learn what it is to press past your flesh. That even when you don't feel like it, you got a sensing in your spirit that the time you don't feel like it is the time you need to press the hardest because there's something that the enemy is trying to keep you from walking into. I need you to look over at somebody and say, walk on in it anyway. Caleb was 40 years old. When he was sent out as a spy, you got to remember this 40 years old. He came back, you know, everybody else had the negative report, but he and Joshua came. They had this good report and he came back with the good report about the promised land. And he demonstrated faithfulness for the next 45 years. He got the promise at 40. He he could see what other people couldn't see when he was 40. But for 45 years, based on what God said at 40, he served faithfully. Even though he had not yet received the promise. Rick Warren said only secure people can serve because insecure people are always concerned about how they appear to others. Oh my God, that that, that, that when you are insecure and when your identity uh, is not firmly anchored in Christ, you do what you do for the sake of appearance and what other folk are going to say, what other folk are going to say about you and see about you. But Caleb was so secure in his relationship with God that he did not allow the appearance of being overlooked. He did not allow uh, the appearance of being passed by or skipped over to invade or disrupt his faithfulness that he said I don't care how it looks I know what God said and I'm going to keep doing what God said do as long as God said do it I don't care what people think about me I don't care what people say about me I don't care about how it looks but I will not allow their opinion to detour me from what God has promised because what Caleb shows us is that even if God takes his time, even if God takes his time, I got to trust his plan to prosper me and bring me to an 
unexpected end, no matter what it looks like in my life, that he said, I'm not going to stop trusting God. I'm going to keep on serving God because I got a word from God. Let me tell you something. If you got a word from God, according to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8, the grass may wither and the flower may fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. The grass may wither and the flower may fade. The storm may come and the winds might fall down, but the word of the Lord. important because when you look at verse 7 it demonstrates Caleb's commitment to the man of God he was assigned to Moses I said he was assigned to Moses but he understood the assignment was bigger than that and see when you understand your assignment you resolve that I'm going to be faithful no matter what no matter how long it takes to manifest I'm going to stay with what God put in my hands I know you have to be unwavering and so Caleb said I'm going to be unwavering in the love that I have for God he was wholly committed to the things of God which means he loved God in the wilderness Oh, y'all ain't going to like a white girl on a Thursday night. But I said, Caleb loved God in the wilderness. See, to love God in the wilderness to the natural mind is like singing for joy when you're dying of thirst. To love God in the wilderness is like trying to run when your legs are broke. To love God in the wilderness is love on another level. Oh, yeah, you got to love God. Everybody can love God in Canaan. Everybody can love God when you got a new house and you're driving a new car and the check is in the mailbox. But can you love God? God in the wilderness. See, the wilderness is that place where I'm out of Egypt, that, that, that I'm not where I used to be. But it's also the place where I'm not yet where I'm going. The door has been cracked, but it's not yet open. And so it's, it's that place in between. Can, can you love God in the in-between place? Can you love God when you got more questions than you have answers? Can you love God when you don't know what's going to happen? Can you love God when people think that you are crazy? Can you love God right on through it when folk are talking about you and scandalizing your name and trying to drag you through the mud? Baby, you got to have thick skin and a tender heart because if you're going to do anything for the Lord, folk are going to hate you. They are going to despise you. They are going to ridicule you. And if you run it Every time somebody talks about your pastor, you are forever going to be running. They talked about Jesus. That's why the Bible said, beware of those whom everyone speaks well of. Because if you're going to stand for truth and if you're going to stand for what's right, there are those who will be offended by the truth that you stand for. Uh, can you love God? In the midst of it all because James 1 7 said the double-minded man should not deceive himself into thinking he will receive anything from God you gotta love God when you don't know how God's gonna do it you gotta love God when you don't know when God's gonna do it I dare you to tell somebody I love God I pull up sometimes at our church and I look at those who are uh, parking cars and I feel so bad sometimes because it's raining outside and I'll roll my window down and say, I need you to understand we really appreciate what you're doing to welcome people onto the parking lot and to show them where they can park. And I said, I know that it gets old and I know sometimes you don't feel like doing it. And they said, Pastor, I do it because I love God. You got to be able to do what you do because you love God. Now, not because you love the applause of people, not because you're looking for more followers, not because you gotta do it because you love God. <laughs> Caleb did what he did because he loved God. 
Look at Caleb. He has a, a courageous spirit and he's, he's looking for some folk who can walk with him, who got some Holy Ghost backbone, some folk who ain't playing with this thing. Caleb shows us how to overcome the obstacles, how to push past the fear, how to walk by faith and not by sight, how to walk by faith and not walk by feeling. Caleb saw all the potential. Everybody else came back reporting on all the problems. There's giants over there. And all of this is going on and that's going on. Look at Numbers 13, 33. It said, there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came uh, of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And because in our own sight we were grasshoppers, they saw us. In other words, they saw us how we saw ourselves. The enemy never called them grasshoppers. They called themselves grasshoppers. But when you've got the spirit of Caleb, you are allergic to folk with the grasshopper mentality. That you cannot stand being around folk who see themselves as less than who they really are. That when you've got the Caleb anointing, you don't sit around and berate yourself and berate other people and give the enemy an opportunity to chime in. No, when you've got the spirit of Caleb, you know who you are. And you can stand up and say, I am more than a conqueror. You can look beyond a temporary situation and you can say, I know that it gets a little tough sometimes I know things can be a little challenging sometimes but we still have the victory there are some people who will walk with you in the course of this life and all they will ever do is point out to you what's wrong they can't ever see what's right Lord deliver us from grasshopper mentality people But let me say this, for those who are sitting back disillusioned, thinking, how can y'all hold on so long? How can you believe to see anything different than you already see? How can you sit back and believe that God is going to do it? I'll tell you how we're going to do it. Because we got a promise and we're going to hold on to the promise. We're going to stand on the promise. Because see, one thing you got to understand, folk who have a promise don't always look like they have a promise. And when you don't look Look like what you know God has said people will underestimate your potential but the good thing is I serve a God who don't leave you like you found you and just because where you're going don't always look better than where you've been let me let you know baby keep walking keep putting one foot in front of the other foot keep taking steps even when you feel like you can't go any further because what God said you shall see it All you need to keep you sane in the midst of an insane situation is a promise from God. You're looking at people around you. They don't have the money they need. They don't have the support they need. They don't have the resources they need. But yet they keep going. You know why they keep going? Because they say, I got a promise about this thing. I got a promise that keeps me from losing my natural born mind. I got a promise. I dare you just to slap two or three people a high five and tell them I have a promise. What you talking about? You got a promise. Yeah, no good thing with he will he withhold from those who love him and walk up right before him. Well, what you gonna do when your money is funny and your change is strange? I'm gonna stand on the promise that said, My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, cause that's a promise. What you gonna do when weeping tries to rock you to sleep at night? I'm gonna stand on the promise that said, Weeping may endure for a night. But joy going to kick the door open and wake me up and shake me from my week. Joy is coming in the morning. That's a promise. What you going to do when you don't know what you're going to do? I'm going to stand on the promise that said God will open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I shall not even have room enough to receive that a promise. Look over at somebody beside you and say, this is your claiming season. There's a tide to sow, but there's also a tide to reap. 
And God is going to honor your faithfulness. You got to understand friends may forsake you. Family may forsake you. Church members might even forsake you. But God said, I'm going to be right there with you every step. This man, Caleb, is 85. He got the promise at 40. 45 years later, Caleb said, I got to tell you something about these 45 years of waiting. I came for somebody who's been in a waiting season. He said in verse 10, he said, now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Can I let y'all know you were not kept alive just to keep living. You've not been kept alive just to keep keeping on, keeping on. No, you've been kept alive because there is something that God has promised. And there are some things that God said, you cannot leave this atmosphere until you have seen it come to pass in your life. He said in these 40 and 5 years, even since the Lord spoke this word through Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now I am 40. In other words, he said, uh, I got this promise when I was 40. He said, but even now, when I'm 85, he said, I'm just as strong now as I was in the day that Moses gave me the word. He said, just like my strength was then, my strength is now, both for war, to come out and to go in. In other words, he said, I can do everything right now that I could do then. He said, I was strong at 40 when God gave me the promise. I'm still in my right mind at 85, which means God has been renewing his strength. Uh, that his strength is being renewed. There are people looking at you right now. People thinking, you sure look good after all that you've been through. Look at them, tell them, it's true, I shouldn't look this good. <laughs> that, that God has kept you. There are people who have been through less and look worse. Y'all, y'all. You ever seen people and they be talking about, yeah, child, I'm 39, and you be looking like somebody used that body before. You'd be like, wait, you, you talking about you 39. I was thinking, surely you were 54. But, but, but then there's people that you look at them, they talking about, yeah, I just turned 84. And you're looking like 84 because they look like they're six, 67. Look like they're 52. <laughs> people who have been through less who look worse, but they look at you and they rejoice. Why? Because God is a keeper. And I just wonder if I have 20 folk tonight who could say God's been keeping me. Not only has he been keeping me, he's been keeping everything connected to me. He's been keeping my family. He's been keeping my children. He's been keeping my mind. But look at him and say, he kept me because I had a promise. I'm holding on to a promise and I can't die until I get it. Let me tell you something, when you realize God is a keeper, if you can't shout for any other reason, you ought to be able to shout over the fact that God has kept you through danger seen and unseen, that God kept Caleb. And he said, Caleb, I'm keeping you because you're going to see it. You ain't got to worry about the stuff that comes in between. God's going to reward you. And God made that promise to him when Moses was alive. And then Moses died and God spoke to Joshua and said, just as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you that everywhere the sole of your foot shall trod. I've already given it. If he said I've already given it, that don't mean he's getting ready to maybe someday fit into it. If he said the place with your feet now trod, I have already, it's already done. He, I dare you to look at somebody and say, I got territory. Tell them I've got territory that has been assigned to me. And I've made up in my mind that I'm taking my territory. It may not look like it's going to happen, but I need you to look at somebody and say, it's going to happen anyway. It's going to happen anyway. 
Oh yeah, the only sign that it's gonna happen might be when it actually does happen. But I need you to tell five more people who are hanging on to something, wondering if it's still going to take place. And I need you to prophesy it's gonna happen anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. If God promised it to surely come to pass. Joshua said, as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. And as my strength was then, even so my strength is now, both for war to go out and to come in. Now give me this mountain whereof the Lord spoke it in this day. In other words, he said, I got strength to take it. And he said, I want everything God said belong to me. I want you to give me what God promised me 45 years ago. And the Bible said, that Joshua remembered it. Oh, I dare you to be grateful that he remembered you tonight. I'm almost done. There were people who were with Moses who had died with Moses. And then there were younger ones who did not even yet know Caleb. So Caleb is carrying the weight of the world, trying to balance the expectation of the people, trying to balance those who do believe in him and those who don't believe in him and still trying to do what God had told him to do. But Joshua remembered Caleb. I need you to look over at somebody and say, though it has tarried for a while, your promise has not expired. Oh, for some of you, the enemy has been telling you that your time has passed. But I need you to tell about five people your promise has not expired. There is no expiration date. And though you might feel like you're getting older in your body, this is the time where things that you heard prophesied years ago are getting ready to happen. It might look like your season is over, but God is shifting the season in your favor. You say, Pastor Brett, I've been through a lot of seasons. I know, baby, because I've been through them with you. We've been through growing seasons where we were challenged, where we were stressed, where God increased our capacity for more. We've been through pruning seasons where God took us through test after test after test, where God had to remove some things and God God had to remove some people and God had to check some things in our spirit. God had to put our attitudes in check. He had to teach us how to bring our opinions under subjection. He had to get our belief system in check. And after we came through growing season and pruning season, we thought we were just about there. And so God said, no, you got one more. You got to go through your wilderness season. And the wilderness season is that place of loneliness where you don't do you any good to talk about it because can't nobody around you identify with it. That you're going through a season of loneliness. You got to learn in that season how to resist the lies that the enemy will tell you. But after the growing season and after the pruning season and after the wilderness season there is another season and it's called the harvest season which is your takeover season and I came to prophesy in this house tonight that you are stepping into your takeover season Oh yeah, and about the time folk try to get an attitude with you, say, baby, it ain't a season, it's a seat. Not a season, it's a seat. Which means I ain't coming in and passing in and passing out. No, nah, baby, I'm coming up in this one and I'm going to sit here. Bishop designate and Lady Ashley no baby it's your takeover season let them talk let them ridicule let them whisper behind closed doors you ain't got no time to talk about what the enemy's doing cause God's doing so much if you had 10,000 tongues it still wouldn't be enough to tell of the goodness of Jesus toward you and your family and your church somebody my season
season is shifting. Tell them my days are about to change. Circumstances are turning around. Oh, don't say it lightly. Don't say it timidly. Don't you be weak with it. Don't play with it. Say, this is my takeover season. All kinds of forces has resisted you. Satan has tried to work against you. It might not look like it's going to happen, but I need you to say it's going to happen anyway. you to say it with fervor, say it with confidence, say it with assurance, it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, let me give your heart some solace. You're not gonna have to work harder to do more. There's gonna be a grace to come upon you to accomplish more and do less. Joshua remembered Caleb and he called Caleb to the front. Caleb is now 85, still vibrant. The Bible said Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the sons of Jephunneh Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron is his inheritance. It is, it is a great land. But one thing I got to let you know is that land is an appreciating asset. So, so, so somebody gonna get it in a minute. Land is an appreciating asset, which means what it was worth when he was 40. What it was worth when he was 40 doesn't compare to what it's worth when he's 85. Tell somebody what you're waiting on is increasing in value while you're waiting. Look at somebody, tell them what you're waiting on is gonna be worth the wait. And this is your season to claim it. This is your time to possess it. I wish I had 15 folk who would open up your mouth and give God some glory in this place tonight. Your pastors carry, your pastors carry the spirit of Caleb. That the spirit of Caleb rests upon this house. Not only does it rest upon this house, but it rests upon MMCC Raleigh as well. And I want to tell you, I want to tell this house by the spirit of the living God that God is getting ready to do some things new and afresh for you, through you. That there is going to be another dimension of ability that rests upon you. It is going to be a supernatural ability. It is going to be a supernatural enabling power that your capacity is increasing to get it done without stress. Your capacity to get it done without stress is increasing. And God is increasing your capacity to receive more of him. To speak his word and to perceive his moving. That more stuff is going to happen without you having to do that much more. I came to declare over this house tonight, you will see it. Whatever the enemy, whatever doubt the enemy has tried to put in your mind. Whatever the enemy has tried to make you question. Whatever the enemy has tried to taunt you with and disrupt your sleep with at night. I came to let you know the devil is a liar. And what God has spoken, you will see it. Now you won't see it from your deathbed. You're going to see it while you are young and full of vitality and full of energy. And you're going to see it. And your children are going to see it. And your children's children are going to see it. 
that there are some of you and you've had have had a sense of expectancy in your spirit that your sense of expectancy wasn't tied to a week of revival or a week of conference that you've gotten up some mornings just excited but didn't know what you were excited about and that is because your spirit has gotten a glimpse of what is going on in the spirit realm and your mind just has not caught up with it yet but your spirit knows that it's already done So I want to pray tonight. I want to pray tonight over this house, over these pastors, over this ministry team. I want to pray tonight because I'm letting you know that I so see something in my spirit. I don't, because of time, want to go into giving my testimony but let me just tell you this in 2011 my dad passed away I had been his assistant pastor for eight years had been in ministry for longer than that but in 2011 he passed away it was at a place that I didn't feel like I had what it took I was saying God I don't know if I have what it takes to do this I don't know if, if I can carry it like he carried it I don't know if I can do what he did because my dad was seen as a father by so many in our city and I said Lord I just don't know if I have what it takes but as he passed you know and we began we were faithful to show up I didn't know the first Sunday after he passed if I was gonna come to church and wasn't nobody there but I pulled up and the people were there. Same people that have always been there were there. And then more people came and we went from one service to two services and two services to three services. And it got to a place I said, God, I cannot keep doing this. Because I got one speed, that's full speed. I don't, I don't know how to like, you know, chill. <laughs> and I was saying, Lord, I, I can't do this three times a day. It's, it's wearing me out. And I said, if you'll show me what to do, I'll do it. We were a ministry who carried no debt. So to even talk about getting a loan to do something was foreign to people because we didn't know debt. But I said, Lord, if you'll show me how to do it, I'll do it and I'll trust you. And I went to sleep one night and the Lord showed me this building. And when I was in that building, I, I'd never seen the building before. So when I woke up, I knew the building and I knew the price. But I had never seen the building before. Walking, praying, <clears throat> came that my mother was getting ready to celebrate a birthday and we wanted to do something as a church family. She and my dad had been married for right at 50 years and so it was a big deal for her when my dad passed. It was a big deal for me. He was my last call every night, my first call every morning. He wasn't just my daddy, he was my friend. He wasn't just my friend, he was my pastor. And so, so it was an adjustment for us all. So, so I was told about this property that was in close proximity to where I had lived the majority of my life. It was in close proximity to where my mother lived. And we went over there to check out the property. And so we decided we would rent the property for her birthday so that the whole church could come. We could cook out, fellowship. Kids could play volleyball. You know, they could throw the baseball, throw football, have a good time. And so that's what we did. While we were walking across that property, I was walking there's like a bowl in the middle. And the Lord said, the place where your feet now tread, I've already given it to you. And it wasn't three minutes later till one of our uh, elders came up to me and said, Pastor, we need this property. Y'all, this property was not even for sale. And so I was listening and I was just saying, God, I know what, what you said, but I just, and I didn't even know what all was there. I saw the different buildings, but I didn't know what any of them were. And so when we were getting ready to leave, I told the state youth director that was living on that property, I said, if y'all ever decide to sell this property, I would just love for you to let my church and I know. I would love for us to have an opportunity to pursue it. And that was that. Three weeks later, I get a call from the state bishop. This was the Church of God campground from Mississippi. I got a call from the state bishop and he said, uh, I would like to meet with you. And so I didn't tell a board member, I didn't tell my mama, I didn't tell anybody, I just went. And when I stepped in his office, tears began to stream down his face. And he said, woman of God, the Lord told me that this property belongs to you and your church. Now, you gotta understand, um, 
no conversations had been had. So he said, do you know what you would want to offer? And I said, well, I said, uh, based on a conversation the Lord had with me in my sleep, I know what I want to offer. I said, but let me go back and talk to our board. Let us have discussions, and we'll come back, and we'll make a formal offer. Met with the board. I told the board, I said, the Lord told me $1.3 million. They said, well, Pastor, whatever we offer, they're going to counter. So they said, let's offer $1.1. Now, y'all... <clears throat> This is a 43-acre property. Let me tell you what's on the property. There's a 1,200-seat sanctuary on the property. There's three residential homes, three- and four-bedroom homes. There's an administration building. There's eight apartments, four on the front, four on the back. There's a 500-seat multi-purpose facility with a full commercial kitchen. There are six dorms. Each of those dorms accommodates 60 people per night, which means we can accommodate 360 people in addition to the houses and the apartments on our campus at one time. There is a children's church building. There is a swimming pool. There is a volleyball uh, pit. There is a playground and so all of this was on the property and we came back and we offered them 1.1 million dollars they were absolutely flabbergasted they were upset they said how in the world could you offer us 1.1 million dollars but do you know how much it would cost you to build everything on this property so we went back into discussions and they countered at 1.6. And we came back and offered them the exact thing that the Lord spoke to me in my dream before I ever walked in the building. And we purchased all of that property for $1.3 million. See, I want you to understand process because words come. But the process don't always look like the word. So we came back, we made the offer, they accepted the offer for 1.3 million. Even then, impeccable financial history. No history of default, no history of foreclosure, no history of anything. We've, we've still got our building downtown that was worth about $750,000. Everything we own is paid for. And, and the, a bank that I was in relationship with had the nerve to tell me and two members of our board who, who happened to be people of color, they looked us in the eye and they said, we just don't believe that a female pastor, uh, I'm, I'm telling you the Lord's truth, we don't believe that a female pastor of a predominantly African-American congregation can do it. Y'all, my heart was broken into a thousand pieces, but it was the best gift they could have ever given us. Because I went back and I told our congregation, and while I was telling our congregation what they said, folks started getting up giving. And before the service was over, we had the full down payment for the building. We closed in 2016 and we paid it off last year. I need you to look over and tell somebody it might look like it's not going to happen. You might face some opposition along the way. You may hear some things that don't line up with what God showed you. You might hear some things that don't line up with what God said to you. Your heart might be broken. There may be nights that you have tears streaming down your face when your head hits the pillar. But let me let you know if I be a woman of God, what God said will come to pass. And it's going to be bigger than your mind has ever imagined. And it's going to be easier than you ever dreamed that it could have been. I just wish I had about 25 folk who would take a victory lap around the sanctuary and just begin to declare it's gonna happen anyway. You will see it. You will touch it. You will taste 
rest in it. You will live in it. You will walk in what you've been waiting on, and it will surely come to pass.
out, just tag two or three people a high five, tell them it's getting ready to happen. The thing that you've been believing God for, the thing that you've been fasting for, the thing that you've been praying for, the thing you've been pushing your plate back for. place father we thank you for those who have believed you father we thank you for those who have heard your voice through mine father we thank you right now that promises are being apprehended we thank you that prophetic fulfillment is being made manifest right before our very eyes we thank you for supernatural rest we thank you for divine restoration and father we thank you that this is a seat of supernatural surprises we thank you, Father, that you're getting ready to do the unexpected, that there are blessings coming from unexpected places. Unexpected resources are getting ready to fall into our hand. Now, Father, we speak it. We declare miracles over this house. We declare miracles over this house. We declare miracles over this house. We declare miracles over the men and women of God. We declare miracles over every son, over every daughter. We say that it is so. It's getting ready to happen in Jesus' name. Everybody in agreement said amen. Amen and amen. It's getting ready to happen. somebody yes I will yes I will tell them yes I will see it I will I will I will tell somebody there's no more doubt in my heart no disbelief in my mind speak what she spoke over our life is going to happen faster than you thought and going to be easier than you thought tell three people faster and easier faster and easier it's going to happen since you already know it's going to happen you ought to praise him like it's already come to pass has already come to pass.
Hallelujah. Though the vision tarry, wait on it. In the end, it shall speak and not lie. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Tell somebody, if he said it, I believe it. Hallelujah. Woo! I know that your perspective has changed tonight. I know your perspective has changed tonight. Woo. And God has opened your eyes to see things from a new perspective. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm not worried anymore. I done found out it's my set time. Said I done found out. Every chain that was holding me back is broken. So tell them, now I know, I will see it. Yes, I will. 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 Yes, tell your neighbor, you too, you too, you too. Yes, you'll see it. you go but I need about 30 or 100 of y'all to take off dancing right now take off dancing right now dance for your future dance for your house oh! dance for what God has already shown you dance for what you believe is going to happen what you believe is going to take place finish dancing the answer will be in your hand the answer spoken in this house thus far was strategically set for this house. I want you to give God praise for the woman of God. I know what it is is to be an itinerant preacher and to be on the road and have what is called road sermons that will work in any door that you go into but tonight this word was for deeper life and I want to praise God for this woman of God who has pressed her ear to the mouth of God to hear what he is, has to say to us in this house. Let's give God praise for Pastor Jennifer Beard one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 
I pray that any doubt that you had has been erased. <laughs> any ounce of disbelief that you had, tonight it has been erased. And when you see the promise of God, don't see the obstacles. See that God promised it. It would be a problem if man promised it, but tell somebody, this is from God. This is from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands. Woo! Glory. Just tell somebody, I'll let you know about the outcome. I'll let you know. Because <laughs> it's going to happen. I'll let you know about the outcome. Because <laughs> it's going to come to pass. I'll let you know about the outcome. I can't wait to share my testimony. Because you don't know how long I've waited. But God, all right, I want to. Now listen, God has blessed us all week long. We have one more night. Hear me, we have one more night, all right? Unless the storm shuts the city down, I want you to grab an umbrella and a raincoat. I want to make you a promise. The hurricane cannot touch you in here. <laughs> so unless, unless the storm shuts the city down, I want to see you in this house tomorrow. Bishop John Guns, who's from Jacksonville, Florida, has been in North Carolina all week. So it's by divine providence that he's already here. So there must be a word from God. Grab your umbrella. You've been wet before. Get in your car and get to deeper life tomorrow night because God is going to speak to this house once again. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and give God praise. If there is anyone in this building tonight that does not have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, everybody remain standing. We're getting ready to let you go. But if you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we have time. We have time for you to make your way to the altar to give your life to him. After all that you have heard this week and even just heard tonight, it is enough to give the rest of your life to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to invite you as well. You still have time to come. I want to invite you as well to make sure that you check out all of our vendors um, that are on the campus tonight, there is a food truck outside. There's several different vendors in the vestibule. I want you to make sure that you stop by them all and patronize them and support your own. Amen? Amen. And again, we are here on tomorrow night for the conclusion of Impact 2022. Let's give God praise for Lady Ashley McNair. And let's give God praise for our worship team. Come on, clap. Our musicians, our media team, our sound, our greeters, our ushers, security, anybody. Come on, clap, 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 clap. 
Anybody that has worked anywhere in ministry, I want you to give special events team a hand. They have prepared for our guests all week long. I want to thank God for everyone who has serving anywhere in ministry. Uh, you are the ones that help this go the way that it's supposed to go in the spirit of excellence. Hallelujah. All right, we're getting ready to let you go, and we are expecting God to move mightily on tomorrow night. I just know that God's going to speak through Bishop Guns on tomorrow night, and so I want to see you in the place. Listen, call a friend, tell a neighbor, call a member, and tell them to be in the house tomorrow night for what God is going to do. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for time well spent in your presence. Thank you for the word of God and the woman of God that has brought this word on tonight for this house. Father, we ask that you bless her and keep her covered in your grace as you begin to even broaden her territory and expand ministry for her. I speak, God, that you give her strength like no other. And God, as we leave this place, dispatch your angels to protect us, cover us in your grace. Help us to reach our destination safely with no hurt, harm, or danger. We'll give your name praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. DLCM. Please share fellowship with your brother and sister before you leave. God bless you.